the, the Messiah, after, after a major calamity, disaster, war, and he is the, he is the president who believes that Iran should have a nuclear bomb, which maybe, maybe, can help him, can help, can help Iran to enhance the coming of the Messiah, to help the Messiah to come. So, I, what shall I tell you? I would hesitate to, to be in a neighborhood in which you have a country which having the nuclear bomb, and to trust that country and its leadership that maybe they'll use it, maybe they will not. I don't want to be at the mercy of, of President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and his likes, that maybe they'll have the bomb and they will not use it. Now, what is the time frame? We said 2009, 2010, maybe 2012. What can be done about it? Now, there are several possibilities. One, we have to look at certain events, which are very near. In February, in, in January, Barack Obama is, going to, is, 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 is moving into the White House. He's, he's going to be sworn as the president. In February, we are having elections in Israel. In May, there are elections in Iran for presidency. It, it, Iran is in is, is in, in despair. As a country, as a nation, they have a huge economic crisis, despite their revenues from oil. Iran is one of the poorest, it's, it's hard to believe, but Iran is one of the poorest countries in the world. They have one of the largest number of drug addicts, of prostitutes, prostitution, uh, their official inflation is 25%, but it's probably 50 or 60. They have a huge rate of unemployment. Every year, nearly half a million Iranians leave, leave the country, and another half million would like to leave, but they don't have visas to go abroad. And Iran is one of the most polluted countries in the world. Half of the country is illiterate, maybe more. They don't have electricity in, in 60, 70% of Iran, in the rural areas. So what you hear is the boosting of the president. We are a strong, we are a power, but Iran is not that strong. And, and the Iranians, with their birth rate, which is very, very high, uh, with a population of 70 million people, uh, lives in a, in, a, in, a, in a very desperate situation. People are very unhappy, and especially about Ahmadinejad, who came in 2005 as a president with the promise that he would, that he would repair the economy. He said it in, in his own words, I would put Iranian oil on every Iranian table or family. In other words, every family of Iran would enjoy the benefits of us being a major oil producer. We have a lot of revenues, and, but s since he came to power, the situation is even worse. And I didn't mention the problems of housing and the problems of, of uh, subsidies that were cut and many, many other problems. So maybe Ahmadinejad, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, will not be elected as a president. It depends on the true ruler of Iran, which is the supreme leader or the spiritual leader, Iran is a theocracy. Don't forget it. It's a theocracy. It's not dem democracy. They have democratic elections, they have democratic processes, but when there is a contradiction between religion and state, between law, religious law and civil law, then the religion the religious law, the religion has the upper end. And the leader by constitution of Iran is the supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, who, who succeeded Khomeini. So it's up to Khamenei, maybe at the last moment in April, March, he would decide that, that because Ahmadinejad is so hated by the public, that 
he would not be allowed to run. Because I told you it's a theocracy, it's not a full democracy. So there is a kind of a vetting committee. It's a council of of sages, of elderly ayatollahs who decide who can run for elected offices and who cannot run. Whether it's a judge or a, or a board of education or a mayor of a, or a governor or a member of parliament or the president. So they decide, they may decide that we don't, they'll find the excuse. They are very good with excuses. They'll find the cues, you are not fit for the job, and we ban you from running for a second term. Or he may run, but Khaminai and his people would spread the, the message, we don't want him to be re-elected. And he would not be elected. So there, there is this possibility. But if he is elected, then what, can, what is going to happen? Now, already the world the international community decided via the UN Security Council to impose sanctions on Iran. Three sets of sanctions for, uh, since 2006, December 2005. <coughs> but these sanctions are very weak. They are targeting 50 individuals in Iran, military commanders, people who are involved in the nuclear program, people who are involved in the missile program, and companies which are involved in these two programs, the missile and the nuclear program. These are weak and these are not very effective. If you want to really change the mind of Iran, you need to impose tougher sanctions on them and especially to hit them on, in their pockets. And the, the Iranian pocket is the oil and the gas industry, which is already in shambles, in deep troubles. Just, just one example, 15% of the Iranian oil production is wasted because their equipment, their equipment is very, very old. So there are leaks in the pipes, the equipment is not adequate and, and they're losing a lot of oil even before they, they refine it or even before they, 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 they sell it abroad. So if you hit them in their pocket, in their major in source of income, then they might think twice. Is it worth to have a nuclear program? Is it worth to go against most of the world or not? But if sanctions of that sort are not imposed, and probably they are not going to impose because there is no international consensus and the Russians and the Chinese are playing a double game. Uh, they don't want Iran to be nuclear, but on the other hand, they are pro they, the Russians are selling Iran with a lot of material, a uh, lot of equipment and, and stuff for their nuclear program. And the Chinese are buying Iranian oil so I don't think they'll join the West, and there are other interests, Russian and Chinese interests, and they don't see eye in eye with the West. So I don't think the, the Chinese and the Russians will, 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 will join the demand, the call for, a tough, for tougher sanctions. So if the sanctions don't put in place tough sanctions, then there is a military option. And when it comes to the military option, the question is, first, is it only a theoretic, theoretical option, whether, or it is a practical option? What are the, uh, who can do it, who will do it, and what are the consequences? What will be the results of such a, such a, and this is a tough question.